We are gonna play snake in this video. Not just any snake, we're gonna play battle snakes. We're gonna have snakes fight each other. And you may think, Eddie, this is a coding channel. Well, I've always been looking for a way where I can code, I kind of play a game with a friend at the same time. There is a way, I've recently discovered battle snakes. And it allows us to code our own snake and then challenge it against other players. Let me give you a quick demo. You probably recognize this snake board. Well, this is my snake and I haven't got anyone else on the board at the moment, it's just me. We're gonna fix that in a future live streaming video where we get to battle against each other. And I wanna show you the code I did. It's actually quite simple to get started. And if I step through the steps it takes, it goes down first, then goes across and goes up. And you may think, wow, Eddie, your snake's really smart. It's avoiding the edges. I haven't coded that part yet. Then it gets an apple and I get four points. That's awesome and it goes up goes around and then it hits itself and my snake dies. You know the rules of snakes, you can't hit the edges, you can't hit other snake players and you can't hit yourself. Well, my snake is pretty stupid as you're gonna see. It's randomly going in different directions. Before we get into it, before I show you code, my channel is about open source, getting you the job, clients and money that you deserve. And if that sounds interesting to you, give this video a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe below and let me know in the comments below what sort of videos you would like to see. As I mentioned, this video is about battle snakes and you can get started really quickly. So let me show you. In the battle snake docs, there are quick start guides, tells you how it works and the rules and the way it works is you set up your own battle snake on your own server and you host that locally or remotely and the battle snake server will then call your snake via an API and get the moves that your snake will play from the code that you've written and then play it on the board with other players or in this case by myself. There are loads of starter projects in different languages that gives you the skeleton you need for the project. That's what we're going to use today, a TypeScript example, but they have them in Python and other languages as well. Let me show you. On the docs, if you go to the starter projects, straight away they have Python, Go, JavaScript, Java, Ruby, but then they also have community starter projects as well, including Rust, C Sharp, Julia, so many. So I picked a TypeScript example. So I forked the project and then I opened it in Codespaces. Let's head over to Codespaces and I'll show you what I've been doing. So here's VS Code in Codespaces. You probably recognize this. One thing I did and you'll have to do to get this working in Codespaces is you'll have to install the plugin ngrok so you can port forward from a public port and IP or public port and URL to your locally running Battlesnake. By default, Codespaces does expose your application publicly, but only to you. You need to be logged in to access that. And for Battlesnakes, we need to be publicly available. Once you do that, you start ngrok and make sure you stop the Codespaces port forwarding in this tab over here, in the Remote Explorer tab. Now that's done, the project is open. Let me show you through the project. The file you wanna look at is index.ts and it's using Express and it's already got the endpoints that are needed. And it's also even got some battle info because you can actually customize it and you can put who the author is, the color, the head and tail of the snake. I should probably put in the author, that's me. And then these are the functions that you need to implement. You need to do a start, a handle move and end. And the most important one is around the handle move. You get the game information from the body and then you've got the possible moves that you want your snake to do. And at the moment we're just doing random we're just randomly moving around the board so let's start the project and from the package.json you just need to do npm start and the project starts and then once you've started your snake and you know it's available we can test that in a private browsing ngrok will give you a url then you head over to battlesnake and in your profile you go to my battle snakes and then it shows you i've got one here test code spaces and what you do is you give it a name and then you give it your public URL. In my case, it's the ngrok one. You can give it description tags and open source projects as well. We'll leave that for now. You hit save, it's updated. And if you go back to your Battlesnake, if you do change the URL or restart the application, don't forget to hit refresh and it will tell you that it's able to get the data. You will get a warning if your API is not reachable. Now that's done, let's play a game. And then we can select the type of game you want, small, medium, large or custom. We'll go for small and 
will add my snake to that board and you could add friends, you can even make it public. I haven't got as far as adding friends or having it public yet. We'll do that on the live stream. Let me know in the comments if that sounds interesting to you. It'd be great to have a live stream battle snake competition with you all. And then hit start game. And what this will do is now go over to our API and get all the moves. So if we head back, you'll see now in the console log where I had all these logs of the game data, it's now outputted all the positions. So our snake has effectively played its moves already and it's already happened. It's not going to call for every move. So what you can do is actually just hit play and the game will finish in a split second. But it's not as fun. I would like to step through and see what our snake will do. So if I take the first step, it goes up. Okay, it's getting closer to an apple. Next step. Oh, it's easy an apple. Really good random move. Goes forward again. I hope it goes down in the second. Or is it going to hit the edge? And it hit the edge and we died. So what we could do is in the moves is make it smarter and say if you're reaching any 0x, 0y or the maximum game size, so the game in this case was 7x7, seven seven, if you're hitting the 7 or 7 positions, any of the borders, then change direction. And that way it will keep alive for longer and it might skate around the edge a bit, but at least it won't crash into the edge. Let's have a look at the game data that we get. So we get the game data, we get the rules. In this case, it's solo. We get the board size, so you can see it's seven by seven. So again, we'll know. You get the snake's positions, you get where the food is on the board, and you get information about our snake and its health and so forth. So the great thing is, you, with that information, you can code your snake to be smarter. I'm really keen to see what smart snakes you create and maybe we can code this together in the next video or what about a live stream where we both code along together and we can see whose snakes win let me know in the comment below what you think don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already if you want to learn more about open source github upskilling collaboration all that amazing stuff to make sure you get the job client the money that you deserve i'll see you in the next video it could be locally with nrock Grok, Grok, Enrock. How do you pronounce that stupid thing? Where's my project? Huh? Oh.